To calculate the ABI, divide the highest ankle systolic pressure by the highest brachial pressure for the index. The concept we are following is that the brachial pressures represent the systemic blood pressure. If one arm pressure is higher than the other, there may be subclavian artery obstruction on the side with the low pressure. Therefore, we use the higher of the two arms as our reference for the most accurate systemic pressure. Never just use right arm, right leg, left arm, left leg. The ankle pressures should be about the same or higher, although they are rarely all the same. If one ankle artery is much lower, it probably has some proximal obstruction and should be investigated. By using the highest ankle pressure, we are measuring the highest functional level of the leg. If the objective were to detect any disease that may be present, we would want to note the lowest pressure. The American Heart Association gives the following ABI interpretation levels. Above 1.3, you will need to pay close attention to the Doppler waveforms and obtain toe pressures. 1.00 to 1.29. These patients will usually have normal exercise tolerance. 0 0.91 to 0 0.99. These patients may still be within normal limits, but an exercise test may uncover a low degree of obstruction that is difficult to document with a resting test only. 0 0.41 to 0 0.90. These patients will certainly experience intermittent claudication when they walk or exercise due to a drop in their ankle pressures. 0 0.00 to 0 0.40. These patients are at risk of or may be experiencing rest pain and or failure to heal injury to the foot or toes. Although there are other organizations that slice and dice the 0 0.91 and below levels into other categories, they agree that above 1.3, the ankle arteries are too calcified to be compressible and should have a TBI or toe brachial index performed. They also agree that below 1.00 is abnormal. An ABI provides three forms of information. The first is the Doppler sound, which to trained or educated ears has characteristic sounds for triphasic, biphasic, and monophasic waveforms. The ability to hear the differences comes with practice. The second is the index or numerical result from dividing the ankle systolic pressure by the brachial systolic pressure and comparing the results with known guidelines. The third is the waveform, which shows the elasticity of the artery and its response to the pressure of the pulsating blood flow, as well as the current state of vasoactivity, dilation and constriction of the arteries. The waveforms should be examined, especially the ankle waveforms. Normal, young, healthy adults have a triphasic, multiphasic waveform with a brisk upstroke, sharp pointed peak, and return to above the baseline. Healthy vessels have more elasticity, which creates the triphasic waveform as a response to the pulsation of the blood through the vessel. A biphasic waveform is also considered healthy but mildly abnormal. It represents a state of vasodilatation that could be caused by mild disease, increased flow secondary to inflammation, or simply increased flow following exercise. A waveform that flattens out and becomes more monophasic and rounded shows more and more progressive disease. The normal triphasic or multiphasic Doppler arterial waveform has an initial steep peak representing the pulse of high flow during cardiac systole. The second phase, moving downward, indicates the reverse flow in early diastole. The third phase is a small peak that signifies the forward flow during late diastole. People particularly at risk for PAD include less than 50 years of age with diabetes and one other atherosclerosis risk factor, hypertension, dyslipidemia, smoking, or hyperhomocystinemia. Note, hyperhomocystinemia is in dispute currently. Age 50 to 69 years with history of diabetes or smoking. 70 years of age and older. Leg symptoms upon exertion, intermittent claudication or ischemic rest pain. Abnormal leg, ankle or foot pulse examination. Known atherosclerotic, carotid, coronary or renal artery disease. Psoriasis increases risk of PAD, MI and CVA. Not all people with PAD are symptomatic. 
In the general population, only 10% of people with PAD have the classic symptoms of intermittent claudication. 